Hello there, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers, where I've been and had a big chunk of a break actually because I ran out of hard disk space to put footage on, so I've had to go and edit uh, a few episodes together to clear up some space, um, which just shows how much I've been enjoying playing if I've got 31 episodes to make, and I've just finished ed uh, editing episode... 16 or 17 or something like that I've, I've just been really enjoying the story and playing and isn't that basically what a video game's about enjoying playing the game if a video game becomes work it's, it's not a game anymore i also um went and had my first dungeon run on gunbreaker it was cutter's cry at level 38. Um, I really enjoyed it. I actually had a blast. Haha. <laughs> Blasting zone. Uh, playing Gunbreaker. There was something about the feel to it. Felt really, really good. Whether it'll be you know, as good at this level. But I, I think I might. I might level Gunbreaker next. Anyway. We've got a main story quest. No. Main scenario quest. Yes. Green... It was Reen. I've actually written down how to pronounce her name. Reen. Seems troubled by the sight of you. Speaking of pronunciations, um, I've been editing together the episodes about Don Meg. And um, we found out in one of the cutscenes how to pr pronounce the, the Froth's name. And immediately at the start of the next episode, I pronounced it wrong again because I'd had a little bit of a break in between. Just, just a, an observation. Are you feeling alright, Demogen? After you defeated the Light Warden, I could swear I saw its ether... Uh, never mind. I'm still getting used to my powers. It's probably nothing. I'm just relieved I was right about where the Warden was hiding. The last one is hiding in Calusia, isn't it? Can't feel it from here, believe it or not. But perhaps we should head back to the Crystarium first. We have a lot to tell the Exarch. And I think we could all do some rest. Yep. He sees it too, then. Hmm. Speak. Oops. Speak with Ishtola at the Crystarium. So we're going to get another... Another cutscene with... I was going to say Alphina, then. Ardbert. I'm happy to have more cutscenes with Ardbert. I prefer to have as few as possible with Alphino. Because Alphino... There's a reason why I emphasize the no at the end of Alpha No's word, uh, name. Alpha No! Ah, Reen's here as well. Stella said she needed to speak with us. It sounded rather urgent. Yeah, so this is going to be about what's happening to us. The others are with the Exarch. Before we join them, there's something I wish to confirm. Tell me, Reen, have you noticed anything peculiar about Demogen's appearance of late? Anything at all? Speak freely, she won't mind. I'm right here. Well, since Minfilia bequeathed her power to me, I've been able to see the light inside of her. Though I didn't think anything of it at first. But after we defeated the Warden in Amaran, I realised something was wrong. You've absorbed its ether, Demogen, and the light within you has grown monstrous. Then it is as I suspected. How are you feeling? Oh! Demogen? Ooh, this isn't good. If naught is done, this will only get worse. So we need an outlet for this power. Green, with the power of the Oracle, you've gained some measure of control over Light, have you not? Is there anything you can do for her? Well, not yet. Extinguishing it is out of the question. Even at her strongest, Minfilia could only hold back the Light. I might be able to suppress it, but I don't know for how long. 
then we have no choice but to rely on Uvianger and his secrets. If the next battle is to be the last, you may yet be able to play your part, but you will need all of your strength. I will discuss strategy with the others and see that everything is made ready for our departure. You are to return to your chambers and rest until then. Understood? Yes, mother. Good. Whether you want it or not, you must most certainly earn some respite. Ah. See? All the way through. All the way through the game. All through the different trials and travails that we've had. We've basically been limitless. We've never had anything that's kind of put us in our place or held us back. Even when Midgard Summer um, cut us off from the Blessing of Light, we regained it. And, uh, yeah, it, we finally got to bursting point. Is everything all right, miss? You don't seem quite yourself. Perhaps hot meal and a freshly made bed will improve matters. Your room is ready if you care to retire. Very good. If you should have need of anything, anything at all, pray do not hesitate to call. Right. Oddbert, tell me some things. He's already here. Oh, of course we haven't seen him for a while. And he's hiding, well, he stayed behind because of those two beasts that he couldn't save. No, they weren't beasts. The two soldiers. Were they Humes? They may have been Humes. Uh, why did you stay behind? I'm not going to accuse him of hiding. Is he feeling powerless? Sometimes the dead would rather not be disturbed. But enough about me. What of Armor Rang? Armor Rang is uh, Light Warden 3. Light Warden 3. We, on the other hand. See. Minfili is gone then. I am afraid so. Which means the reason I must suffer this purgatory shall forever remain a mystery. Yeah, because he, she told him that he, it was not yet his time. But we'll find out. Whoa! Ouch! Yeah. What's the matter? Are you all right? No, no, Oddbert. We are not all right. Ah. Wait, you can feel that. What? Oh. What just happened? He absorbed some of it. There was something Minfilia said to me. Minfilia said my time had not yet come. That I still had a role to play. Not even the most valiant heroes can stand alone. No. No, it couldn't be. There's only one hero in this room, and it is not me. Ah, so odd, but has to accept. Cursed to wander. No. Oh. 
Who comes a knocking? Oh, he's gone. So yeah, Arbert still has a role to play. Oh, th this is not surprising. We knew this. It's the Exarch. What are you doing? <clears throat> Forgive the intrusion, but Minfilia, that is, Reen, and the others were asking after you. Is everything all right? Mm, kind of. Not really. We still haven't told anybody about seeing Ardbert, have we? That pain again. And did it pass? Yes. In a manner of speaking. I think it's, this could be cripple us at any Thank goodness for that. necessarily dramatic points. So Though I know only too well how much you have suffered on our behalf in recent days. Indeed, I have no right to impose upon you further. Nope. But nevertheless, I must ask one thing of you. That you survive this, no matter what. When the dust settles, you must return to your world. For the battles to come, and the wars yet unwon. The final Light Warden is all that stands between us and victory. Hmm. There is still much we must do to prepare. But for now, I will see if there is aught that may remedy the strange affliction which plagues you. When the Warden is dead, will your work finally be done? Yes, I believe it will. Once the tyranny of light is ended, the people of the Crystarium will be safe, and the future that must be shall come to pass. Emmett Selk, in that cutscene that we had between the two of them, questioned the, the motivation and the source of the Crystal Exarch's power. And the work that he's doing. And the further on through the story that we go, the more and more doubts that I have in my mind about this guy and his role in all this and the origin of his power. And I realize that all of those doubts pretty much come from the things that the Asian has said which is interesting because not only is Emmett Selk the cedar of chaos for the characters but he's arguably a cedar of chaos for us as players as well hmm I'll not keep you from your rest any longer take as much time as you like If we're going to get any rest. Oh. Edmond de Forton. Heavensward. No, this isn't right. It would need to be later. After the liberation of Alamigo, perhaps. going on please tell me you finished we have to go they'll be upon us any moment very well where to next then let's just worry about getting out of the city and pray the airship's still in one piece anywhere we go from here we'll just be more the same what's going on Yards for the sound of that last one. I reckon the Knights 12 might be the Knights Rubble now. 
Is there nothing else we can do? Do? Look around you. This isn't war. It's a sickness. It's spreading to every corner of Eorzea. The city-states are in disarray, and by all accounts, the Far East fare no better. There'll be nothing left of us when this is over. Is this... Is this the future a, a la Black Rose? This world is beyond saving. I never tire of that story. When the hero swipes in and strides a white dragon to save the little girl. That was us, wasn't it? But this is the future. I could die happy knowing someone like that was still around. Indeed. Not today. Not while our message remains undelivered. Is this a dream that we're having? It is. This is something we're having while we're asleep. Have faith, my friend. We will find her. Or is this something that's going on while we're on the first? Hmm, active questions. Was that the past? If it was, how far into the past was it? Because Heaven's Ward was, had been written. So that... Ooh, Of the Sun, the Sea. I'm setting that as my title. Of the sunless sea. Huh. Put that on. Huh. Yes, that was mysterious. Very mysterious. Return to Yulmore. This is so this is Act Five, so to speak. By the way his face lights up at your approach, the manager of sweets has been waiting for you. Ah Mistress Blackthorn. I trust you had a pleasant rest. What are you ensconced in your chamber, a message arrived for you from the Exarch. I bid you come to the Ocular at your earliest convenience. And madam? Wherever your duties may take you next, I shall pray for your safe return. May the night keep you. Hmm. Yeah, that, that dream has left me with all kinds of questions. And not quite enough explanation to to form any particular theories apart from was that the past or future? When about was that? If it's mentioned the Knights 12, then it must be the past because the Knights 12 were the Knights of the Round, the, the Heaven's Ward, which we have... Which we have killed. Or defeated. There you are. May I assume you've had your fill of rest? Well, I'm ready to start the next act. Now that we are all present, let us speak of our plan. 
Thus far, we have vanquished four Light Wardens, restoring Night to much of Norvrand. Yep. Only one remains, that of Colusia. And with Reen to guide us, I am certain we will find it. I think Volthry might be the Light Warden. We're so close now. If we can just take care of this one last Warden, we'll rob the Sin Eaters of their final foothold and drive them out of Norvrant once and for all. It will be a new beginning for the first. A chance for the people to rebuild their world. I don't think it's going to be that simple. In short, a prize worth fighting for. That, on the other hand, I agree with. Oh, God, I just agreed with Alphano. Delivering the first from destruction, so too shall we unsow the seeds of the eighth umbral calamity. Emmett, anything to offer? Do you hear? Your dreams of rejoining is in jeopardy. Are you sure you're not tempted to intervene? You labor under the misapprehension that vanquishing the Sin Eaters is tantamount to saving the world. It is not. Oh, good. In truth, you only delay the inevitable, lengthening your fleeting lives by the smallest of margins. It would be churlish of me to deny you this small concession close as we've become foolish and misguided though you are you are not without charm each and every one of you is possessed of a noble heart when the weak want for succor you do not hesitate to provide it alas your nobility is short-sighted you think only of the problem in front of your nose At the end of the day the assins are literally immortal he can wait forever. He's in no rush. And we are all... I was going to say human, but we are all mortal. You know, the warrior of light or darkness for, for all her incredible... Or his, for their incredible power. They, they will die eventually. Um, we are, by the very nature of our mortality, short-sighted. A limitation of your ephemeral existence. What did I just say? Our lives may seem short and insignificant to the likes of you, but one does not need to be an eternal being to achieve lasting change. Oh no, but... Uh, if I may stop you there, I do not claim that we Asians are special. That is another misconception. Oh? In the beginning, everyone, everyone lived nigh for eternity. Such was the natural order of things. So in the but sun like ring, so much else, this was taken from you. So the, uh, what, one of the things that I, I can't remember where in the story this came, but before the 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 the, shard, the before the source was sundered, before the world was split into the, the source and its reflections, there was just one race, and it was only through the sundering that they split to become the myriad peoples of Eorzea and, and the other worlds. These these segments, if you like, of what I'm, what I'm assuming, and I don't know whether this has ever been confirmed, uh, this might just be pure speculation on my part, but the different races represent different parts of personality brought, ma made manifest. Um, which is why they all look, you know, you've got the big burly Rugadins, you've got the tiny innocence um, and scheming of the Lalafels. Uh, that, that is, you know, pure speculation on my part. And uh, probably if I really think about it, it might not even make sense. But that's, that's the idea that I've always had, that when the world was sundered and the races, I can't remember where it was said that there was just one race before the sundering. It may even have been in one of the encyclopedias. If I remember, which I probably won't, I'll, I'll look it up and uh, see if I can put something up on screen. Um, but I think this is the first inclination, indication that we've had that everybody was practically immortal. It's probably just going to talk about it right now. Just uh... You won't object if I borrow your plaything. Uh... Who? What? Hey? 
Oh, he's... In the distant past, when the world was one and whole, a Ooh, great story. all life. It began without warning. The very laws of the star were warped and broken, and chaos swiftly spread throughout the land. Faced with annihilation, we sought to imbue the star with its own will. Thus was Zodiac born, and by his power was order restored. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting that he talks about Zodiac as a bringer of order. Um, because as a, as a long time role player, as an RPG fan, you know I grew up with Dungeons and Dragons, so. In my brain, the fundamentals of the alignment system, lawful good, lawful neutral, uh, chaotic good, and so on and so forth, chaotic evil, lawful evil, I've almost always thought about fantasy tropes in those alignment definitions. And obviously, law and chaos are not the same as good and evil. You know, you can have a lawful society that's full of evil beings, like the, the drow. Um, and therefore, you can't think about light and dark, law and chaos, uh, in the same way as you can think about good and evil. Good and evil are mortal concepts. Um, law and order versus chaos, also, to an extent, mortal concepts. I mean, they're all words. That we, yeah, we that we've created, um, but the idea that has been kind of drip fed to us, just based on our own preconceptions of storytelling tropes, is that Heidelin, Light, Crystal, Final Fantasy, is good, and that Zodiac, especially if you've played Final Fantasy XII, uh, Zodiac, bad, Chaos, Asians, bad, evil. This has been the running theme all the way through Final Fantasy XIV. Okay, what the Asians have done haven't exactly endeared them to us as characters or players. But this is the first time that we've had an extended amount of contact with an Asian that hasn't actively been trying to get in our faces and mess things up. And that is, I think, the genius of what the writers have been doing with Emmett Selk in this expansion so far, at having him try a different approach, at him offering context for what the Asians have been doing. Because as I tell my students, context is so important in storytelling, in poetry writing, in playwriting. All stories are products of the context in which they are written. Shakespeare was a product of his time. Shelley was a product of his time when he was writing Ozymandias. Um, Blake was a product of his time when he was writing London and talking about the chaos and the corruption and the ineffectiveness of the church. We are all products of our upbringing, the society that we live in. So having this this quite free talking figure in Emmett Selk is his ability to just as far as we know just speak from the context of his immortal existence from when he was born through the summoning of Zodiac through this first calamity I think is excellent storytelling it gives context to what the Asins are trying to do assuming that there is any truth to it whatsoever and even if there isn't, it's still excellent storytelling because it is weaving this web that we are, as players and possibly even as characters, becoming enthralled in. You know, I'm clearly, and I know this because I've watched some of the videos back, I'm clearly excited and enthralled by this type of storytelling. 
even if it is just exposition, it's exposition rooted in suspicions and theories and things that have been drip fed, drip, drip fed to us for several years now. And it's difficult, therefore, to, to not feel invested in what he is saying. Ere long, however, thankless fools began to fear that Zodiac's might was too great. And so they conjured another to keep him in check. Your own dear Hydalin. I think I mentioned at some point um, that wherever light goes, it finds that the darkness has always got there first. So the idea that dark comes before light. I mean, it, it's fundamental to a lot of religions. And... And there was light, and he saw that it was good. You know, darkness comes first. Even in my own writing, the, the darkness is there first. The, the abyss, the void, the shadow. And it is in that shadow that beings are formed, intellects are created, and through their clash of wills, there is light and reality. Um, I'm not going to talk about my writing too much, because I'm not going to put it on the same kind of level as this and the two beings waged war until with a single devastating blow Hydaelyn unmade Zodiac scattering his being across space and time so you told us in the Katana Ravel yes yes and there began our woes with Hydaelyn's blow and all that it wrought as a counterbalance to Zodiac Hydaelyn was created with the power to enervate her foe. Yeah. Uh -huh. This singular ability strikes not at such banal things as flesh, but everything that defines the target, diluting its existence. So it was For example, was she to strike you? So so Hydaelyn is as has mentioned, been mentioned before, a power site. She's there to sap the strength of things. Two individuals, identical in appearance, yet reduced in all respects. Strength, intelligence, the soul itself. All is halved. Do you see? This self-same fate befell not only Zodiac, but the very star. So she, yeah, she divides. Only three were fortunate enough to escape the sundering. Me being one of them. When I beheld the shattered remnants of our home, I knew deepest despair. So literally only three people. The inhabitants of these 14 fragments were feeble, frail and foolish. Oblivious to their imperfection, ignorant of their past. Everyone else been divided. All formed creatures thrashing blindly about. Pitiful, disturbing, depressing. So the, the, the question raised there is then what did the people of you know before the Sundering actually look like? What what is Emmett Selk's true form as an immortal being? So, we took it upon ourselves to rejoin the worlds. But in our eagerness and, I confess, our ignorance, we erred and made a useless void of the 13th. It was only afterwards that we discovered a connection twixt source and shard. A flow of energy that maintains elemental balance. Ah.
From a purely Asian standpoint, it could be said that what you seek to do is only logical. But that would be to ignore the immeasurable destruction wrought with each rejoining. You have murdered millions, and this we cannot condone. By your fragmented existence, you continue to give rise to tragedies far crueler than any calamity. But yes, moral relativism and all that. Case in point, I do not consider you to be truly alive, ergo, I will not be guilty of murder if I kill you. Yeah, moral relativism. That's not endeared yourself to us, mind you. Oh, don't look at me like that. You for whom I have only the highest expectations. A vaunted hero of the source, seven times rejoined. Long have I awaited one who might brave a path of lesser tragedy. A resilient soul able to endure the necessary pain. I dare to hope that my wait is over. Seven times rejoined. Is the power of the Warrior of Lights the recombination of a legendary hero? There was a subtle implication there that the that there is a warrior of light in each world, and that through rejoinings they are bringing that hero back together. So, finish your task and slay the light warden. Make proof of your usefulness, and then we may speak again. Yeah, are we on the path to becoming something like the Asians? Because that would be an interesting development. Hello? Lena! Forgive me, my lord, but this could not wait. Thanks for knocking. You're more. Freely, Captain. He's moving. Our informant in Colusia sends word of unusual activity in Yulmor. It appears their forces are entrenching themselves at key points throughout the city. Yeah, I think Vorthy is the, the Light Warden. Or if he's not. Use of resources. I rather doubt Lord Vorthy is concerned for the safety of his citizens. You think he's harboring the Light Warden inside the city walls? Even if he does have some means of controlling the Sin Eaters, wouldn't that be a little risky? Risky or not, if there is even a chance the Warden is hiding there, we will need to act fast. The longer we wait, the better prepared the Yulmorans will be. That may well explain why we've not been able to use the Aetherite to get to Yulmor yet. Agreed. See to your preparations then and make for Calusia. God's willing, this hunt will be the last. Let us see it through. No, together. it won't. This is only level 77 stuff. There's three more levels yet. That's a lot of story. We should begin by assembling in right. There we may assess the situation in Yulmore and decide how best to proceed. Hmm. I like the fact that Emmett Stelt doesn't feel the need to walk out because he can just teleport whenever he wants. Hmm. I feel like most of this episode has been me talking. Um, and I am absolutely fine with that. Your condition is unchanged. Good. If you can but hold out until the end of the coming battle, I'm confident that we'll find a remedy for your affliction. I am not... I'm starting not to trust him. We've not spoken for a while, have we? Not since the aftermath of the Eater's attack. Rest assured I am fully recovered and will do my utmost to support you and your fellow warriors of darkness. Yes? Did my lesson provoke thought, giving rise to further questions? 
Three of you escaped the Sundering, but what of those who didn't? Ah, it makes me wish I'd talk to him more now. Why, their very beings were divided into 14, of course. Yet by our power, we unsundered Asians may raise up one of their fragments to their original office. Ah, but I suppose this in itself bears explaining. So the names by which you know us are not in fact our names. Be it Elidibus or Lahabrea or, or Igayim, all are titles of office. Ah, that explains why there are more of them. And that explains... One of the things that I was always kind of a little bit confused by was Gaius as the Shadow Hunter killing Asians. It's like, why are there so many of them? So he can, the, the original three can raise them up. Over the eons, I have overseen several changings of the guard among our sundered brethren. And in such instances, the vacant title or ordinarily goes to another fragment of the self-same soul. Well, it is by no means impossible to raise up wholly unrelated individuals. Tis we whose fervent entreaties brought forth those Lord Zodiac, whose souls he claimed in the beginning, who make the truest servants. So if we... Oh, oh I want to find out most of this. So if we were to defeat all the Assassins of the Source, what is your true name then? Hmm. There may come a day when I reveal my true name to you, but this is not it. Of course, you may well die none the wiser, but life is full of such disappointments. Can I ask him the other one? Yes. Then none would remain to raise up new assets, and our kind would eventually fade from existence. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, feel free to dream. Feel free to dream. Tis no crime to do so. I say. It's a rather interesting thing for him to admit. This episode is like 42 minutes long at this point pre-editing. And I literally feel like we've just watched cutscenes and talked about stuff. And, and I am completely fine with that there you are the others have gone ahead to reconnoitre the gate town we are to follow shortly it has been a while has it not since the two of us infiltrated Yulmo since we faced Lord Vorthry and I felt such fury as I've never felt before his actions are unconscionable of course and any abhorrence I felt for him entirely justified yet mingled my, with my rage there was something else at first i was unsure what it was but in the course of our struggles i found the answer and both his self-righteousness and his absolute belief that he and he alone is the cure to this world's ills i saw a reflection of myself and it brought the memories of all my past follies flooding back he is the vainglorious ignorant fool i once was and having shared in his affliction i feel duty bound to open his eyes to the truth whether he will accept it with the good grace I did is another question. Hmm. What does it mean? Do you sense the light one? I'm not sure. The aura is different. Perhaps if we were a little closer. It is time we're on our way in any case. Let us join our comrades in Gate Town. Demogen, as a precaution, I ask you that you go first to ensure the path is clear. The closer we are to you, more the more I worry that Reen will may be recognised. If you see any prying eyes along the way, pray encourage the owners to look elsewhere. I can do that. Yeah, you know, if she changed her clothes, chances are she wouldn't be recognised because she's got different coloured hair. She doesn't have glowy eyes anymore. Um, you know, it would make sense. Speak with people in Gate Town or en route to Gate Town. We shall do that in the next episode. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this law bomb, law dump, and more importantly, me waxing lyrical on the nature of morality and moralic, uh, moral, moralistic relativism and stuff like that. I do tend to go off on one, don't I? 
Hope you found it interesting. At any rate, if you agree, disagree, you feel free to comment below. And uh, I'm happy to engage in that kind of discussion. It's part and parcel of what I am and what I do. Um, on the subject of what Reen was just saying there about the aura being different, I, 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 I'm, either Vorthri is the Light Warden or the, the, the thing on him is the Light Warden. I, I, I strongly suspect that the Light Warden is inside him, if not him. We'll see as we go into the next chunk of content. Act 5, as I'm calling it. I'll see you in the continuation of that. Cheerio. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and subscribe. Remember to ring the bell notification icon to get notified when new videos go live. And until next time, toodle pip.